I'm Sebastian St. James. It is official. The 2022 bear market is officially here. If you're expecting it, well, here it is. If you weren't, well, unfortunately, that may not be good news for you. Let me prove it to you. Here is the graph of the S&P 500 over the last one year. Visually, we can see the peak there is on the 3rd of January and it is 4,796.56. Have a look to the left, have a look to the right, Clearly, that is the peak. However, if we look right down the bottom, we will notice that the 52-week high is $4,818.62. 4.8 on the graph, we see 4.7. What has gone wrong? Why is my graph not correct? Fear not, I will explain. The price that we're seeing on the graph is actually just the close of the market. So a single price during the day. Of course, the price goes up and down throughout the day. And the high, the 4.8 that we're reading, is actually an intraday price. That makes sense. So the official top of the S&P 500 is 481.62. The definition of a bear market is when the price in the stock market drops by 20%. So from its recent high, which we now know, down by 20%. Let's do the math. The high was 4818.62. 20% of that is 963.724. But then again, you knew that, didn't you? Therefore, the bear market will hit officially at 3854.896 to the decimal place. That's a math for you. Has that happened? Well, I'm claiming it is. Let me show you. If we look at the recent graph, this is the one month. On the 20th of May, there was 3,901.36. But if you look in the lower right-hand corner, it says the 52-week low is 3,810.32. 3 3.9, 3.8, why is there a discrepancy? How have I got this figures wrong? Oh, it's the same answer as the last time. It's an intraday low, and what we show on the graph is just close of business, all right? So relax, it's all making sense. So the 52 week low is 3,810.32. We needed for the bear market to occur 3,854.896. Remember to three decimal places, therefore, it is official. There is a bear market, it's, it's happened, we've proven it mathematically, it, it, it's all done. So a bear market is a drop by 20%. What happens if it only goes halfway? What if it drops by 10%? That is called a correction. Okay, so what should I do in a bear market? There's one thing that's most important. Don't panic in big red letters, yes. You have some important decisions to make. If you're already in stocks which are comfortable for the long term, such as an index fund, for example, you have done your job already. You can just sit tight, relax, put your feet up. Your job is done. The market will go up again. Statistically, that's likely. And your stocks will recover during that time. So for now, there's nothing that you need to do. When will the market recover? Well, nobody knows is the correct answer to that. It could be next week. It could be next year. It may have started happening already. One thing we know for sure is the S&P 500 has a strong upward bias. It does. So over the long term, there's usually nothing to worry about statistically. So you should be fine. So we've dropped 20%. Could the share market drop even further? The answer is yes, and I'll give you some specific stats about how far it could drop. I know these things. There have been 26 bear markets in the S&P 500 since 1928. 26, were you there for each and every one of them? No, probably not. Stocks lose on average 36% during a bear market. So we're down by 20%, 36 to go on average. So. We may get out of this just with the 20%, but you know, I wouldn't necessarily bet on that. Stocks gain on average 114% during a bull market. So 36 down during a bear, 114 up during a bull. What's this bull market you talk about, Sebastian? Well, a bull market is when the share price goes up in the market by 20% from a recent low. So when the market drops by 20%, it's called a bear market. When it goes up by 20%, it's called a bull market. When it drops by 10%, it's called a correction. What is it called when it goes up by 10%? It's called a good time. What? That's a joke. I have a video coming out soon that will tell you exactly what to do during a recession. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out.
What should I do if I'm, say, in risky stocks like penny stocks that have bad financials? Just as a random example, what would I do? Well. <laughs> The problem with bear markets and the problem with the economy going down is that weak stocks suffer. All stocks suffer, but weak ones in particular could go out of business. It's certainly a possibility. So consider moving your money out of risky penny stocks into, say, an S&P 500 fund or good quality shares. Now, not all penny stocks are risky by definition. Penny only means small. But if you are concerned, then you can move to more reliable ground. What if I'm not in an index fund? Maybe I have ownership of shares directly like Apple and Amazon and Walmart and Harbour Freight. Do I need to sell up and move to an index fund? The answer is no. An index fund is just a collection of large stocks that have gone up over time. It's really just the largest stocks that are on the market. So if you're already in these types of stocks, then you can just hold on. It's probably the best idea. What I'm telling you here, none of this is personal advice. I don't know you personally. I don't know what your financial situation is. The answers I'm giving are just general good practice guidelines. Should I sell everything and go straight to cash? The answer is probably not. The damage is already done and you've lost the money as far as the 20% crash is concerned. If you sell up now, then you will not recover from the benefits of the market going up. And I'll tell you exactly why that matters. Is there any reason why I might want to go to cash? The answer is yes. Let's say you have a short term commitment. So you have a house deposit that you're going to need in six months and you need $100,000 for the deposit. And right now you have $101,000 after the 20% crash. That might be a very good reason to hop out right now and don't risk it on a potential further drop. But if you're able to hold on for a longer period of time, three, five years, then statistically likely you are better off not being in cash at all right now. How long will this bear market last for, Sebastian? I need to know the answers. You seem to have them. Tell me precisely how long the bear market will be. Well, I can do that for you. Bear markets typically tend to be fairly short lived. The average bear market is 289 days or around 9.6 months. Uh, excuse me, that is not short. That's a long time. Well, it might be, but consider a bull market. The average length of a bull market is 991 days or 2.7 years. So by comparison, yeah, a bear market is fairly short. How often does a bear market happen on average every 3.6 years? Bear markets have actually been less frequent since World War II. Between 1928 and 1944, there were 12 bear markets or one every 1.4 years. Since 1945, so World War II's finished, there has been 14, one every 5.4 years. So we're on the right side of the Second World War. So hopefully, <laughs> fingers crossed, we'll be OK. So if the market has dropped by 20 percent and it's going to drop by, what, 34 percent on average, Aren't I just safer to go off to cash right now and forego the potential future drop? I've already got half the drop. I, I don't want the other half. Well, no, because of the following statistics. Half of the S&P's strongest days in the last 20 years have occurred during a bear market. How is this possible? Well, remember, a bear market is from the top right down to the bottom and it remains in bear market territory until it recovers. So when it starts to recover, when it gets it clear in its mind that it's no longer having issues, then suddenly those markets tend to go up. And during what is technically still a bear market, some of the best growth days actually happen during those periods. Another 34% of the market's best days took place in the first two months of a bull market. Oh, that's fine. I'll just wait until the bull market happens. No, but you don't realize it's only in retrospect that you now know that you're in a bull market, but at the time you didn't know. So if you wait until we definitely know the market has recovered and we're once again in a bull market, you would have actually statistically missed out on virtually all the wonderful up days. So you cannot sit out put into cash, you know, you've already lost at least 20%. If you jump out into cash now, then statistically speaking, you'll probably miss out on the growth. It's supposed to fix everything up. So this is a bear market. Does that mean there's also going to be a recession? There have been 26 bear markets since 1929, but only 15 recessions during that time. So it's about, you know, 50% chance that a bear market and a recession will go hand in hand. So certainly not guaranteed at all. 
You've talked about the situation when I have stocks already, but let's say I have some cash and I may be interested in buying some shares. Maybe I'm saving a percentage of my wage, so every month or so I have some fresh cash to put in the market. Is this a good time? Is it too risky? Should I buy shares during a bear market? The answer is yes, shares are on sale. It's an excellent time to buy good quality stocks right now. How much do stocks grow on average when we factor in all the bear markets? I've done a video on that. Go ahead and click on it here.